Some things in life never change. Empires collapse, anime profile pictures have no valid opinions, and most importantly, people lie. Oh shit. They have much to gain from doing so. However, one man in the faraway lands of Crocodile Dundee and Kangaroos has a goal to prove to you that people tell the truth and that they have much to gain from doing so. The man and the team who are toppling mainstream media outlets. Sir Swag, everybody. It's, uh, it's been a while, hasn't it? Like two weeks or something? Hi, my name is V and welcome to Talking Points, the show where I cook food and praise channels that are much bigger than mine. Today's video has to do with truth and journalism, so grab a seat, strap in, and let's delve right into it, shall we? So... Referring to De Veritate by Thomas Aquinas, we get our most spread out definition of truth. He defines truth as the correspondence between the mind and the thing it's observing. Although this is true, I would like to add to this really quick, because we have a problem. It's not obvious, but bear with me, because it's important for the rest of the video. If correspondence is the criteria for what is true, and someone arrives with a totally different correspondence with the exact same basis, which one is false? Take, for example, gun violence in America. The basis goes as follows. One, there are working firearms in the hands of people. Two, people are using said firearms to kill other individuals. Three, gun-related deaths are increasing. While one might say that the firearms are actually what is killing people, someone else might come up with the conclusion that the people using the firearms are actually the ones killing the people. And now, we have a conundrum. Same basis, but two results. You see, I don't really want to go too in-depth about weapons, because it is a topic for another video, but I want you to realize at least one thing. Truth is more tricky than you think. Journalism still uses this definition of truth for its ethical code. Its very first core value is honesty, aka truthfulness. But here's the kicker, right? How the fuck are they supposed to stay truthful when they can hold two exact opposite positions without any contradiction? I didn't wipe the water off of my pan before starting to cook with oil. It sounds like a fucking war zone. Pain. This is where Sir Swag answers this issue, where most media outlets would just pick a side and invest all of their coverage into said side, the Sir Swag team spreads out. You will rarely see Fox News address issues that were presented and analyzed by CNN, for example. And same goes for the other side, but it also works with any pair of mainstream media outlets. You probably will never see MSNBC, for example, covering issues that were written about in the Daily Mail. However, there is always a diverse range of perspectives, opinions, and analysis on every topic presented by the Sir Swag News team. This goes as far as including testimonies of actual real people, like you and I, not some scripted interview by fuckface Mech Davison or some shit like that. They also don't pick a side on the issues that they present, because they try to pull from every type of analysis into their own. They also treat all sides of the situations at hand respectfully. 
I can name at least a few show hosts that absolutely do not care about the enemy team and think that they're just a bunch of dumbass lunatics. And honestly, I think that's how you get a better truth than with correspondence alone. By encompassing all possible correspondences into a single higher correspondence, you actually get closer to the truth. I like to see it as this threshold. You don't necessarily need every point of view possible, but you need a sufficient amount to understand the issue at hand correctly. Especially on massive topics like the current dictatorship in Belarus. If you didn't know that was happening, I don't blame you. Before looking at their videos, I didn't even know that was happening. To take my previous example back, I think that it rings much truer to say that both the guns and the people using the firearms are both factors in gun-related deaths. But I doubt that they are the only factors, however. Things like culture, mental health, political and racial tensions, all of this play out in this statistic. These are all other factors contributing to these deaths. And this is what I like the most about Sir Swag, is that he does exactly this. When covering the George Floyd protests, they both covered the good and the bad of the situation. They explained how these protests came to be and why they were important, while simultaneously also explaining that there were bad incidents during those protests. They also explained both the point of view of the protesters as well as the police's, which I feel is something that is either usually left out or not talked about enough. You don't see TV stations doing that shit because they have no incentive to do so. They make their money off of hate and division, much like BuzzFeed and Vice will write terrible pieces to bait you into hate-clicking their articles to power their website. Big news stations pander to their audiences by confirming their biases, not confronting them. So, by following those big news stations, you're actually only getting a fraction of the truth, because they don't care about anything outside of their following's interests. The Sir Swag news team is just so damn good at what they do that I just had to make a video about it. It is unironically one of my most prized news sources nowadays. It actually is kind of sad to think that a YouTube channel has more sources and diversity in their analysis than multi-billion dollar media conglomerates. No, I'm, I'm not kidding. Seriously. Each video has around 65 sources. One of them has over 120 sources for it. It is unironically a golden trove of refined information in a world where everything is so surface level and kind of superfluous. Please, if you haven't already, go take a look at their channel. Go watch at least one of their videos. I promise you, it is entirely worth it. So much so that you might even stop watching mainstream news altogether after it. All in all, I hope that this video was of some help to you. If you enjoy my content, consider subscribing and dropping a like. It takes less than 5 seconds, but it helps me tremendously in the long run. Thank you all so much for watching, every single one of you. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, stay safe, stay healthy, but most important of all, stay curious. So I actually forgot to film the rest of the uh, video uh, and more specifically what uh, I have been cooking this entire time. So here it goes. Whoa, it's rice and beans. Oh my God, dude. Literally amazing. Quite literally the best rice and beans you've ever seen in your life, bro. That shit is actually so fucking red. What the hell?